Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to remind you to check out our other Western podcasts released daily by going to otrwesterns.com or searching OTR Westerns in your podcast app of choice. I also wanted to invite you to check out our other podcast channel releasing non-Western shows by going to otnetcast.com or by searching otnetcast in your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be in the Lone Ranger original air date is August 24th, 1945, and the title is Single Tracks. Thanks for listening, and I hope you enjoy. Indian companion Toto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations. And nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. It was after dark when the train from the east came into the town of Broken Bow. Pete Calkins came out of the telegraph office, swinging the signal lantern to direct the iron horse onto the rails of the siding. As the engineer closed the throttle and brought the train to a halt, he stepped up to the cab. That'll do it, Jim. That'll do. My last car on the siding? Yep, you're clear. Hold it. Hey, Corgan. Hello, Sheriff. Let me talk to the engineer. Hold on. You'll have plenty of time. Give Jim a chance to shut down the engine. I'll wait. Did you put that information I gave you on the telegraph line? Sure thing. I put it out just as you gave it to me. Is uh, Jim Stevens running the train? Sure, he always runs it. Same as Pete's always a fireman. Maybe Jim can tell me something about Snake Lofgren. Maybe so. Here he comes. Hey, Calkins, the eastbound won't be through till morning, will it? Don't expect so, Jim. All right, Pete, let the fires die out, then you can go. Hey, so long, Jim. So long, Pete. The fireman's got relatives nearby. Like to spend a night with him when he gets a chance. How are you, Sheriff? Me? I'm all right. Hang it all, you know, Calkins, we should have double tracks. Seems like a waste of time to pull off on the side until the eastbound comes through. Well, better to pull off than to meet the eastbound head on. <laughs> I suppose so. How's your sister? Well, Betty's fine. She's gone on a visit. A visit? 
You mean she's not in Broken Bow? Nope. She rode over to Hawksville. CRN. Ah, uh, of all the doggone luck. I counted on seeing her. I brought her a present from St. Louis. Oh, that's too bad. Well, better luck next trip. Hey, uh, Jim, I want to speak to you. <laughs> sure thing, Sheriff. What's on your mind? You pick up a lot of information between here and the East? Oh, sometimes. Hear yeah. anything about a man named Lofgren? Snake Lofgren? That's the one. What you hear about him? Uh, nothing. Nothing? No, all I know about him is what it says in the handbill. We were warned to be on guard against Snake and his gang. You'd better be. There's a fat reward for his capture, isn't there? There sure is. Hey, Sheriff, what makes you think Snake's likely to be in this part of the country? A deputy marshal rode in the other day and said that he'd seen one of the buzzards that used to travel with Snake. Oh, I see. He didn't know whether the critter was still one of Snake's gang or not. If he is, then it's likely that Snake and the rest of his outfit is near here. You sure you didn't hear anything about him, Stevens? Yeah, not a word, Sheriff. Maybe the deputy was wrong. He could be. He wasn't sure of his facts. Right now, I'm more interested in Betty. Look, Calkins, did your sister know that my train was due? Yeah, she knew it, Jim, but... And she went to visit her aunt. Well, not because she wanted to. Aunt Callie's sick. Oh. Betty said to tell you she was mighty sorry she couldn't see you this trip. She hopes she'll be here when you make the return run. <laughs> Doggone, I sure hope so. How long will you be in town, Stevens? No, I'm generally here for 10 or 12 hours. What's the last report on Eastbound, Calkins? Won't be here till tomorrow morning. <laughs> that sure is a waste of time. My train could be a long way west of here if I didn't have to hold her until Eastbound goes past. Well, I, I may as well go to the cafe and see the boys. <laughs> Shadows across from the cafe concealed a tall masked man and an Indian who had maintained their vigil since early evening. He's still there, Tonto. Hidden at the side of the cafe. Uh, you sure him one of Lofgren gang? Yes. Left him meek and has been in every attack that Lofgren made. I uh, wonder why him here. That's what I want to know. He sure went to a lot of trouble to shake off that deputy who was trailing him. Uh, he wouldn't have circled back to Broken Bow if it hadn't been important. Maybe Snake and the rest of the gang near here. It's likely. I think I... Toto, look. Ah, uh, me see. Following the man who just came from the cafe. We go? Yes, leave the horses where they are. We'll go on foot. following me? Keep your voice down. Oh. A gun, huh? Well, if this is a stick... It ain't. It... Well? You're Jim Stevens, ain't you? That's the name. Your engineer on the train? Yeah, but what's that... You'd better come with me. I'll listen to a few things that'll be especially interesting. If you've got anything to say, you can say it right here. We'll go over there where there's trees. I don't aim to be interrupted by someone coming this way. Why, if you... Get moving. All right, you needn't problem me with that gun. Move! It's a mighty high-handed way of doing things. You're going to have a doggone good reason You'll for it. You'll see. Watch where you walk. There's a lot of roots in this wood. You stumble and I might think it's some sort of a trick and shoot. How far are we going? Not far. Keep going. There's a man waiting for us. Who is it? The name is Lofgren. Snake? Stand right where you are. Here he is, boss. Anyone see you, Lefty? Nah. What about that deputy marshal? I shook him. He thinks I'm on my way north. What's the idea of bringing me here? What do you want of me? You run the train, don't you? And what if I do? You put your train on the side until the eastbound goes through. Is that right? Yeah. You didn't wait. You went on toward the west. What had happened? <laughs> what had happened? What do you think had happened if two trains traveled toward each other on the same track? It'd be a smash-up. <laughs> Good. That's what I want. You're going to shove on so there'll be a smash. I'm going to do nothing of the sort. That's where you're wrong. Stop jabbing with that gun. I'll handle it, Lefty. If you think Just a minute, Stevens. We don't expect you to wreck the train for nothing. Why? We'll make a deal with you. I'm not interested in a deal. My job's to take the train to the West and do it safe. And nothing you can offer will make me do it. Just a minute. You don't know what we're going to offer. I don't care what it is. How about the life of a girl? What? The girl you love. Why, you... You don't we mean... We mean you're... Betty Calkins. You can't touch her. She's with her aunt. She isn't even in town. She's... Uh, just a minute. 
she's supposed to be with her aunt. But you see, Stephen, she didn't get there. Where is she? She's where she won't be found until we let her go. That's all you need to know, Stephen. Chances won't be worth much if you don't do what we want. Why, you... It won't be hard. All you got to do is start out toward the west. That's all. You can jump clear of the engine before the smash. Sure, there's no reason why you should get hurt. You can get clear. You're trying to run a bluff. You haven't even got the girl at all. Maybe we better take you along with us and show you some proof. Plenty of time. You don't have to decide right away. Take you to our camp. Show you the proof that we got the girl. I'll give you a chance to think it over. Come on. Let's go on. You're staying with us. All that dirty scheming folk. Yes, I was Did you hear that? No. Mm. Snake Lofgren. Uh, we can't capture him now. Might mean the life of that girl. Is that right? Follow them, Toto. Find out where Snake is camped. See if Betty Calkins is there. Mm. I'll call on her brother. I want to speak to you. Yes? Corkins, I want to... Oh, never mind the mask. What do you want of me? What do you want here? Now come with me. You've got to open the telegraph office and send a message. But I don't... Come on. Hey, this is... I'll tell you about it on the way. You needn't drag me. Then step lively. What's the idea? The handbill on the wall of the telegraph office. Describes an outlaw named Lofgren. Snake Lofgren. You're not Lofgren. No, but I saw him a few minutes ago. I heard what he and his gang are planning... You did? Yes. They've captured Jim Stevens. You know him, don't you? The engineer? Yes. I'm trying to force him to take the westbound out before the tracks are clear. They are. Lofkin wants the westbound train to smash into the train that's coming from the west. Jim Stevens won't do it. He wouldn't do that for any amount of money. Lofkin's not using money. He's offering a human life. The life of your sister. My sister? I don't believe you. What sort of a game are you trying to play on me? Where is your sister? She went to Hawksville to visit her aunt. Are you sure that she reached Hawksville safely? Oh, I'm not sure, but Lofkin I... promised to show Jim Stevens proof that he's captured the girl. Are you working with Lofkin? No. Well, who are you, anyway? What's the difference as long as I'm on the right side? Well, why not go get Lofkin? I'll go with you. I don't know where he's camped. You haven't told the sheriff what you know. Oh, no, not yet. Corkins, why does Lofkin want a train wreck? How... What makes you think I'd know? You know when the trains carry anything of unusual value. Oh, not always. I... Some of the trains in the West carry gold bullion. You and the other telegraph operators are advised accordingly. Is Snake after a cargo of gold? Well, I... Is he? Well, that might be it. Here we are. Unlock that door. I didn't bring the key. You didn't give me a chance. I'll fix that. What are you going to do? Bullet will smash the bolt. There. Go on in. Why did you drag me here? Get to your telegraph while I light the lamp. Call the operator at Grant's Corners. Tell him to stop the eastbound train. Oh, he's locked up for the night. He'll stay until the eastbound's gone through. But it's probably past Grant's Corners by this time. What do you want to do, man? Sit on your hands until it's too late? Well, I... I think we should try to find Lofgren's camp. I think differently. I'll call Grant's Corners. I'll see here. You've got no authority. I'm taking the authority. Get busy. stood over the telegraph operator, Jim Stevens gazed wide-eyed at a small gold trinket that Snake Lofgren held out. Did I have one of the boys build up the fire so he can see this better? Sorry. Oh, I see it. Gold pin. It's got the letters B.C. on the back. I guess you recognize it, don't you, Stevens? I, I bought that from St. Louis for, for Betty Calkins. She was wearing it when we captured her. Are you ornery? As further proof that she's our prisoner. You know a horse when you see it, don't you? Yeah. There it stands. Here's a ribbon she wore in her hair. Where is she? Where are you crooks holding her? You want to see her? You'll do as I've asked. Wreck two trains. There'll be some cash in it for you, Stephen. Uh, sure. We'll give you cash enough so you won't have to worry about losing your job. There'll be plenty of gold aboard the eastbound. How did you crooks know about that gold? We got ways of learning things. What do you say? How about it, Stephen? How much cash do you want? You think I'd do what you want for money? All right, all right. Never mind the money. It's the life of your girl to consider. Well, I... Well, 
I'd have to have someone to feed the fire. Left you go with you. Yeah, we can both hop off the train before the smash. Hey, you. Uh, What's that? Hank's got someone. I'll pick it. Hank, who's that? What'd you find? Come in, hand here. I was coming into camp. I someone hit the tree. This redskin. Snooping on it. Heard everything that was said. I'll let him have it on the head with the barrel of my gun. Good work. Looks to me like we've got a passenger for the last run of the westbound train. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. To continue our story, Tonto lay unconscious near the fire in Snake Lofkin's camp. Yeah, it's a good thing I saw the redskin hiding among the trees, eh, Snake? Yeah. Yeah, it's a good thing you saw him. You must have hit him hard, Hank. I uh, wasn't gentle. Out cold. Got to do something about him. I wonder how much he hurt. Whatever he hurt, it's too much. Well, being as I'm the one cracked him on the head, I'll finish the job with a bullet if you say so. Oh, no, that won't do. Can't leave murdered men around for the law to find. Well, we got to get rid of him. What's the matter with my idea, Snake? What is your idea? Tie him up and put him on the train. He'll be killed in the crash. Oh, you can't do that. I won't have Shut a up. Hand, But I won't... Stevens, you're taking the orders. You're going to take the train west, and that's all. What else happens is none of your business. Why, it's murder. I said shut up. You want to see Betty Coffins again, don't you? Right. How about it, Snake? Should we put him on the train? Yeah, that's what we'll do. Get some ropes on him. You won't need ropes. I cracked him hard enough to keep him cool for some time. It won't take chances. But if the law sees him rope when he's found dead in the wreckage, won't it be the same as finding him here with a bullet in his hide? As long as he ain't found near here, I don't care what the law thinks. Uh, yeah. You ready to meet our terms, Stephen? Well, I... Or ain't I, you concerned about the life of your girl? If I could just see her for a minute... Well, I... you can't. She's not around here. Now, what's your final answer? Yes or no? All right. I'll run the train. Good enough. Now, then, we got to get going. Hank, you go over the engine and build up the fire. Right. We'll break camp so we can ride ahead and be on hand right after the wreck. How about the redskin? We'll bring him to the train when we've broken camp. Now, get going. Build up that fire. Right. Stephen, you stay here with us so we can keep an eye on you. Until it's time for you to go to work. Calkins sat at the desk in the telegraph office. The Lone Ranger, standing next to him, interpreted the clicks that came from the sounder. Was that the operator at Grant's Corners? Uh, yeah. Yes, it was. He's on the job. Good. He said the eastbound hadn't passed there. And there's still time to stop the train. But that won't do any good. There's no siding at Grant's Corners. Even if the westbound is stopped there, it'll still be on the single tracks. The train from here will tie right on into it. Tell the operator to stop the train and get everyone off. I don't... Hurry. There's a lot to be done after you sent that message. All right. From where he stood in the telegraph office, the Lone Ranger couldn't see the engine which rested on the siding. He didn't know that Hank was shoveling furiously, building up the fire. Lefty kept a sharp watch on Jim as he approached the engine. Snake had the unconscious form of Tonto on the back of his horse. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. Steady, Hank's got considerable steam up already. Yeah, don't take long. Oh. Hey, Hank. Yeah. Down the engine. Give us a hand. Get the red skin off the back of my horse. 
Give me a hand, Lefty. Right. <laughs> He's heavy. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Put him on the ground. Yeah. Just there. That engine's still out? Seems to be. When I hit someone, they stay out for a while. Get him on the engine. Stevens, you can give Hank a hand with him. If you don't, Save it. I agreed to run the train. I didn't agree to help murder this Indian. You'll do what we say. Now take his feet. I'll take his shoulders. Oh, he's heavy. Get him aboard. <laughs> Start as soon as there's enough steam pressure. We're going to need help getting him aboard, Snake. What's the matter? You weak or something? Come on, I'll help you. Come on. The Lone Ranger watched while Calkins tapped the key of the telegraph. At first, the masked man paid little attention to the metallic signals. Then, as his knowledge of the Morse code told him what the operator was transmitting, he was struck by the grim truth of the situation. I'm telling the Grant Corners operator all about the situation. Just a minute, Calkins. Hey, leave that switch alone. You cut me off. What's your game? What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. You weren't sending the right message. How do you know what I was sending? Because I happen to know the code. What? You were sending routine reports that might just as well be sent tomorrow. Get out of that chair. No, get you over there. I'll show you. Right, so get over there. Oh. Now stay there until I send the message. And I'll have some questions to ask you. While the Lone Ranger sent the urgent signals to Grant's Corners, his faithful Indian companion was made ready for the death ride. His unconscious form lay on the floor of the engine cab. His hands and feet were lashed with heavy ropes. Unlike Hank and Jim, Tonto would have no chance to leap from the train before the crash. Lofgren inspected the ropes, tugged them to make sure the knots were tight. Yeah. Guess the Indian will be all right for the next half hour. And after that, he'll be all right for keeps, huh? How soon can you get underway, Stevens? I, it won't take long. Now, just remember this. You don't smack into the east bound and hard, your girl will suffer. And plenty. Hank, you keep that fire roaring and the steam pressure high. I want this train to have plenty of speed when it hits. I'm running a big risk, Snake. I got a jump for You'll me. be paid for the risk. Hey, Snake, you coming down from that engine? Yeah, right away. What's the matter, Lucy? Look ahead there, up on the main line. What about it? There's a light in the window of the telegraph office. Calkins must be there. We'll go see him before we ride west. The train will start soon, won't it? Yep. Steady, fella. Come on, come on, come on with me. Get up, get up. Why didn't you want the eastbound hell? You hit me awful hard. It'll be harder the next time. You're working with Snake, aren't you? No. The no, truth, I... Calkins? Wait, I... Where is your sister? Well, I only know what you told you me. You know more than that talk. Let go. Let's have the truth. You hurt my wrist. Out with it. Oh. Hi, Sam, you're covered. Lofgren. Uh, looks like we interrupted something. What's up, Calkins? Get rid of this masked man. Who is he? What's he doing here? He knows the code. He sent word to Grant's Corners. What word? To hold the train. He told me eastbound had to be held. He said the westbound might be heading that way. Ah, he did, huh? We might deal with him the same as we did with the Redskin. Redskin? He caught a snooping Indian. He's on the engine. He'll be killed when the smash comes. You better get at the telegraph and send word to let the eastbound come through. Did Stevens agree to run the train? Sure thing. He swallowed our story in fine shape. <laughs> He's dead sure we got your sister a prisoner. He'll be plenty sore to learn that she was safe with her aunt all the time. Now, mister, you better unmask. Oh, I'm learning a lot. How did you convince Stevens that the girl was a prisoner? It wasn't hard. Not with the help that Calkins gave us. I hear the train. Yeah, it's starting out. We can't put this critter aboard now. Yeah, it's too bad. Reckon we'll have to dispose of the masked men with a bullet. Not in here, Snake. The sheriff will Tell have to... Tell the sheriff that Jim Stevens did it. Let him take all the blame. What do you find out? He won't out? be able to deny it. He's going to get his before the wreck. Oh, he didn't tell me that. Hank's aboard the cab. He's got his orders. You knock Stevens down just before he jumps off the train. There she goes. Past the window. Yeah? I'd like to find out more about you, mister. You'd find that pretty difficult. Well, we ain't got the time. We're already late. We're going so... to be a lot later. 
I suppose you'll always wonder how Tonto got off that train. What got the... off, sorry. Hey, look out. Too high. Hawkins. One for you. Lefty. Your Lefty. turn. No, no, don't no, hit me. I didn't mean anything. Come over here. No, they made me do it. This wire will do to tie your hand. Let me go. Stop struggling, Hawkins, or I'll put this wire around your neck instead of your wrist. Oh, please, mister. Let me explain. Save it for the sheriff. You might also tell him the snake isn't as clever as he's supposed to be. Oh. He fell for the oldest of all tricks and looked over his shoulder the wrong time. I'll be jailed. That's a great idea. I'll need more wire for your unconscious pals. If you're just save it. With deaf lightning speed, the Lone Ranger lashed the outlaw's hands with many strands of wire. Then he raced from the office and hurried to his horse. Say there's Silver State big fella. We're riding hard. Come on, Silver. Riding like the wind, the masked man dashed after the train. He overtook the caboose. The increasing speed of the westbound called for every ounce of silver's mighty strength. The Lone Ranger gained slowly on the engine. Sparks and cinders pouring from the iron monster beat against his face. He bent low over the saddle. Come on, Silver. Come on, boy. He came alongside the engine. He could see the face of Jim ruddy in the glow of the roaring fire. Up the train. Up it, Jim. What's that out there? I can't hear him. I'll fix it, Billy. Ah, don't shoot. Come, Hamlet. They shoot on the train. Stop the train. Oh, can we fix you? Ah, good work, Indy. Let's fix him. You stop the train. I can't. My girl's life is at stake. Run her outside. Say stop the train. You stop him. Hang it all, Indian. Why'd you make me stop the train? Wait. You see... You know what they'll do to my girl? Friend, come on board. Hey, who are you? What happened to that man on the floor? The Indian knocked him down. Me tied. Jim cut rope. The crooks had him tied up so he'd be killed. The trains were to smash up. Yes, and then... I know about that. I cut the rope when Stevens wasn't looking. But you, who I are you? I stopped you because there's no need for a wreck. Betty Calkins is with the rat. What? Are you sure? Lofton didn't capture her. He lied to you. But I saw the Betty's brother was in on the plan. He helped Snake convince you. That's how Lofkin got Betty's tenant. Oh, that dirty schemer. The sooner I get Betty away from Calkins, the better it'll be. He never was no good. You'll find Calkins tied up on the floor of his office. Snake Lofkin and another man the sheriff wants are with him. It'll be a downright pleasure to take the sheriff to him. Well, if Tonto fires the engine, can you back as far as the siding? Well, you bet I can. And I'll ride ahead and repair some damage to the line so I can send word for the eastbound to come through. I'm into your medicine boat, Tonto. Uh... Ah, but wait. Hold on a minute. Who are you? copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.